Welcome back to another episode of the Eternum Labs podcast. And we are so excited to share with you our new guest, John Gray, the author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And he just recognizes that relationships contribute to anti-aging as best as possible. He has done all of this research, he's written so many books, he's one of the world's best authors. And today he shares so many amazing lessons. Seriously, with this podcast, put your thinking caps on, get ready to go on an absolute ride and an absolute journey, even get a notepad and a pen out because seriously, this podcast is something that you don't, you don't want to miss a beat of this. There's just so much amazing facts, information on how to be better, how to live longer, how to live happier, how to optimize your relationships and how to optimize your life. And we talk about all things testosterone, estrogen, how to, how to figure everything out and how to hack it all. It's just absolutely amazing. So I hope you guys enjoy this podcast as much as we did. And obviously, this podcast is brought to you by Eternum Labs. And if you care about your health, if you want to perform at your peak, if you want to live longer and feel better, we do everything possible to try and and supplement you so that you can do that and you can be that every single day. And if you head to eternumlabs.com.au and you put in the code Corey, you can get a discount for 10% off for all of our good stuff. We have some new sneaky secret products coming out, especially in the terms of antioxidants. And if you guys don't know what antioxidants do, essentially because of the world that we live in, we have so many toxins bombarding us all the time and we don't have the DNA to get rid of all the toxins. And we don't, and because of the stress that we have to deal with on a a daily basis, just in general, is that it uses all of our antioxidants up. So we have less antioxidants to deal with all of the different toxins that we are exposed to in order to flush them out. So we need to have a higher amount of antioxidants within our body. That's why we've come out with a range of new products, some really good ones, and I'll and I'll leave you guys to go have a look and and see which ones that you like or is going to be best for you. So head to the website, eternalmlabs.com.au to check those out. Without any further ado, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this podcast as much as we did. It was just so fantastic. We're absolutely blessed to have John on, and we'll see you in the next one. G'day, John. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. I'm a big fan. Happy to be with you. Yeah. <laughs> what have you been working on recently, and what have you been sort of doing? What have you been up to? Well, Corey, you know, I wrote Men from Mars 25 years ago. I continue to promote those ideas because they're still <laughs> yeah. necessary. I've written 27 other books. And I think the most relevant book for people today is The Extension. It's almost Men from Mars Part 2. It's called Beyond Mars and Venus. It's up one of those books over there. Yeah. And it focuses on how everything's changed now because I think it's because we have a higher consciousness, more self-awareness. Uh, men have greater access to what we'll call traditional feminine qualities, and women have access to traditional male qualities. Now, let's define what those are. The feminine qualities is love and happiness. So men are happier and and want to do things. They're motivated to be happy. They're motivated to find love. They're they're motivated to enjoy life more. Uh, You know, when I was growing up in Texas in the 50s, Men are not like just going to go out and enjoy themselves. But in the 60s, when I came of age, you know, I grew my hair out and put on beads, demonstrated for peace. You know, these were all radical ideas back there. And what I'm defining that is, is my masculine side, my awareness going over to my feminine side to find some sort of balance, some wholeness. And we're in an age of where people want to be holistic and whole and complete. And at the same time, women were going over and saying, we want to be CEOs and break through the glass ceiling and run the world and do politics, education. So they're going over their male side. Men are going more their female side to enjoy their lives more. Uh, Peace, love, free sex. (laughs) This is all about, you know, back in the 50s, you had to wait to get married to have sex, you know, now just like uh, freedom. So this is all cool. And the problem is, is once women get over to their male side, it's hard for them to get back to the female. And for men, once you get over on the female side, it's hard to get back to the male side. And so what I've done is focused in beyond Mars and Venus, identify the qualities of masculinity, identify the qualities of femininity, 
And people can say, well, who are you to say that? Well, first of all, it's, that knowledge is to a certain extent been around for thousands of years, but we can even discount that. And we can be right now, a lot of people want to start all over like, okay, we want to rewrite history. We want to rewrite everything. Okay, rewrite everything. And what you'll see is science today tells us that when men are happy, their testosterone levels are 10 to 20 times ha higher than women. And when women are happy, their estrogen levels are 10 to 20 times higher than a man's. And so that's a basic difference. Now, the, what your mindset determines what hormones are being produced. So if my mindset is I can do it myself, that's one masculine quality, which women have too, right? They have a male side. I want to do it myself. I can do it myself. I'm independent. That produces testosterone. And you'll feel like, oh, you know, I want to be in a team. I want to be with other people. I want to be in a relationship. I want to be in a special relationship. I want lasting love to be one person. We'll grow and love together. That's our female side. And women are losing that. And men are losing their male side. Because what happens is estrogen gets produced when you're feeling dependent on something outside yourself to be happy. So a lot of guys are dependent on alcohol too much and dependent on porn too much, dependent upon uh, food too much to feel good rather than depending on themselves as the primary source of happiness. What I do, yeah. my success, my achievements, my accomplishments, my making sense of life, solving problems, all of that stimulates testosterone and also uh, delayed gratification instead of impulsiveness, delayed gratification, which is such an important key for success is produces testosterone. That means I want it. I got to do a lot of stuff to get there. And when I get there, I feel victorious. That is testosterone production. Some of the qualities of testosterone, whereas feeling I want, I want to do what I enjoy doing. I want to do what I like to do. I want to do what's fun to do. I want to do what's nurturing to do, harmonious, not competitive, but we're all sharing. That's our female side. And what we want to do is to be happy and fulfilled. We now know men need to do more of that uh, masculine stuff and women need to do more of that feminine stuff. Otherwise, they're not happy. They're not going to stay in love. The relationships will go down. Success women go to the male side, they become successful because the male side is about success. The female side is about love and happiness. So women are way on their male side. They're very successful, but often not happy. They're stressed. And men go away to their female side. They don't feel the same drive, the motivation, the ambition, to get out there and do it, to pick yourself back up and do it again. <laughs> you know, we want it to be a bit too easy. So guys are like more passive, they're not, they're not as motivated as before. And particularly when they get into a relationship, boom, that's when the challenge becomes the most because you love someone, you care about them. That's going to raise your estrogen. And if you don't have high testosterone levels, that estrogen just pushes testosterone down. So right now, the average uh, averages, not everybody, but averages of men at 20 years old have 20% less testosterone than just 25 years ago. Crazy. So our testosterone levels are, are going down and they don't have to. And if you listen to the uh, press, the, you know, which reports the averages right now, the averages in the Western world of men is at 35, whatever their testosterone levels are, they start going down. And so that's how do we get them up. How do we get them up? <laughs> Guys who are 50 are half what they used to be. And oh, what they used to be now is like 20% lower than it was a few years ago. So how do you get them up? Well, relationships that promote testosterone in men, relationships that promote estrogen in women will keep those testosterone levels up. So at 70 years old, my testosterone levels are 50% higher than when I was a young man. Okay, 50% higher. And what that means is I'm motivated, uh, I have delayed gratification, uh, I have sex quite a lot. <laughs> the, the passion in my relationship is sustained. Now, I will say that I'm going to a phase right now to just be, uh, share what's happened. I was married to my wife, Bonnie, for 34 years, and she passed. You know, she's 70 years old. She passed with cancer, and it was a hereditary thing. And she even took good care of her health and everything. But anyway, 
now I've been in a relationship for uh, two years and, you know, that honeymoon phase. So I clearly I'm in that honeymoon phase, <laughs> but I speak from my experience, my marriage with my wife, we had passion that grew over time. And the reason I talk about that is because that's what people want today. You get in a relationship and you've been there six months, a year or something, and it just starts to fall flat. And people today expect more, they want more, and so they move on. And previous generations, based upon old fashioned skills of communication, skills of relating, based upon the old fashioned way, romance never lasted. So there's never been a case where somebody lived for 34 years old and 34 years marriage, there'd be a few of course, where the testosterone levels continue to rise in a man, that's the biology, but that's the symptom of that is attraction, attraction to your partner, adoration of your partner, enjoying sex with your partner, so that not only do you love to have sex with your partner, but they love to have sex with you as well. You see, women typically only, if they have really low self-esteem, they use sex to get love. And, and that's one Whoa. example, that's sort of the exception. Whoa. But generally speaking, women who have relatively high self-esteem lose interest in sex over time. And it's because the, the key here is because their estrogen levels don't continue to rise higher. And we even know that as women hit menopause, you know, my wife went through menopause, but she was able to still love sex, enjoy sex, want to have sex with me, primarily because she kept her estrogen in balance with her testosterone. So yes, at, at, at menopause, women's estrogen levels will drop because your ovaries are no longer making estrogen. But the, the adrenal gland, if you're not stressed out, will make plenty of estrogen, not as much as before, but it's the key here is not as much as before, but in balance with testosterone levels. And unfortunately, most women become uh, uninterested over time in marriage with sex. It happens uh, even more quickly if you're in a gay relationship, the gay relationships it even more because they don't have the polarity. Now they can work to find that polarity, but I'll just talk about heterosexual relationships, which is I have to find within myself the ability to keep my male side stronger than my female side, so to speak. I mean, yeah, my testosterone yeah. levels have to go up. So those are some basic form uh, kind of a basic understanding. I love to hear your questions or comments. Yeah, um, that, that makes so much sense to me. I think you explained that like quite brilliantly. How would you in a relationship increase attraction? Like what are some okay, so practical ways? The, the first step, I get it. People just want a magic pill and uh, you're gonna have <laughs> isn't that great? Never happened before in history. Yeah. Women say, what happened to Romeo and Juliet? Well, they died the day after they got married. Yeah. <laughs> they, they got, like the standard relationship yeah. where the passion goes away. So this is, it's kind of like saying, how do you become enlightened? Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was, I was a monk for nine years in my twenties and I became traditionally what's called enlightenment. Uh, but that's just part of the journey of finding your higher self, your oneness with the universe, with God. The real challenge is bringing that light down into this body through love, uh, through a mental understanding and compassion of others and bringing it into your heart through sustained love and then bringing it all the way down to sharing power and then bringing it all the way down to uh, sharing sex while you're grounded in love. See, the thing is, if you have sex without love, you will lose attraction to your partner. Mm -hmm. If you have too much sex, even if there's the love part, you'll lose attraction to your partner. This is interesting. You know, I did a whole big talk a while back called uh, not enough sex or too much sex. And what I had to, you know, yeah, I got a PhD in sex, right? So <laughs> my uh, counseling and sexology. So here I am, wrote a book, best-selling book for a year on the number one on New York Times list called uh, Mars Venus in the Bedroom. Yeah, I read and so book. here I'm teaching sex. I have a great class at marsvenus.com called The Secrets of Great Sex. And it's really, really good. Or you can read the book together with your partner. But anyway... The, the point is people will come to me and say, oh, you have a great sex life. I say, great sex life. And they say, uh, how often do you have sex? I'd say once a week. And they go, oh, what? You only have sex once a week? I say, you don't understand. If you just try it, and this is what I want every couple to know, because you ask for a quick fix on more passion in your relationship. Let's assume that you have good communication outside the, outside the bedroom. 
inside the bedroom. Let's assume that you, you're a man, you understand foreplay. <laughs> you understand to start kissing first, then breasts next, then clitoris next, then vagina next, then G-spot next, then cervix. Okay, so let's assume you know the basics. You can find all those basics in, in, what is it, in Mars, Venus, in the bedroom. And a lot of other books, since I wrote that book, are all kind of ripoffs of that book. But it's, it's good knowledge. Everybody can find that knowledge today. Uh, some of it's a little weird out there. But let's just go with the basics. What's missing everywhere is sex once a week. You know why? If you, this, this, this uh, study came out in Japan that showed if a guy has sex twice a week or masturbates even twice a week, his testosterone levels will never grow. They will stay at baseline. If he goes for six days without ejaculating, on the seventh day, for one day, his testosterone level will go 50% higher and he can enjoy great sex. So you have mediocre sex, great sex. So if you're in a sexual relationship, you go for six days. And if you're not in a sexual relationship, at least go for six days. And then if you're gonna masturbate, masturbate. And then do not masturbate the passion to pornography. There you're hyper-stimulating dopamine in the brain that desensitizes dopamine receptor sites and actually interferes with your ability to be turned on by a real girl. Now, I predicted this 20 years ago, once all the guys started getting addicted to porn, I said, look, don't you get porn produces higher dopamine levels than real sex. And it's like cocaine. And when you take cocaine, what happens in the brain, I'm an expert on the brain here. I wrote a whole book on ADD, which is a problem in the brain of hyperstimulation and addictions and memory and aging. <laughs> so when you, when you expose yourself to high stimulation, you overstimulate receptor sites in the brain and they close down. And then in order to feel pleasure and excitement and attraction, you've got to have higher dopamine stimulation again. And paradoxically for men, porn, uh, having sex with a fantasy, and to a certain extent, having a sex with a woman you don't love or don't know, will stimulate higher levels of dopamine, which will then turn on higher levels of testosterone and you'll have great sex. Yes, you'll have intensity. There'll be an intensity, no love at all, <laughs> but you'll, you'll love how you feel. <laughs> See, the whole point of being a man is learning how to love others, not just feeling good. I mean, that's the <laughs> you know, hero is always sacrificing himself for others. He's doing things for others, but he gets paid. I'm not talking about martyrdom here. I'm talking about you know putting forth your best self and getting rewarded for it. But you got to put forth your best self. But anyway, back, back to the study, it showed that if you ejaculate with a woman on Saturday, uh, then your testosterone levels are at, will go to baseline the next day. And they'll stay there forever at baseline. Every time you ejaculate, they'll go back to baseline, back to baseline. So you can go online, you can say, oh, does masturbation lower your testosterone levels? No except that we also have the research showing that after 35, all men's testosterone levels are going down. And let's be frank, all men are <laughs> masturbating. So, so that's why that is there. But nobody has made that conclusion. But let me just say what the study shows that I can talk facts, because I do like talking scientific facts, data, as they say today, is that if you ejaculate on Saturday night and you go for six days all week and you don't ejaculate, then on Saturday night, your testosterone levels will go 50% higher. Then the next day it will go back down the baseline. So if you want to like be 70 years old or 80, I'm not yet 80, but I plan to live a long time because I understand this, is if you do it once a week, then what happens is each time your whole plumbing, so to speak, your whole system gets, the, it's like you won the lottery at least once a week. Let's say like when I write a best-selling book, kabang, you know, I feel like Superman for a few days. <laughs> That's it. It doesn't last that long, but you got a good six days and then you, you got to do something big again. However, all you have to do is just not ejaculate. And if you're a man biologically and you're having sex, you got to have sex and you ejaculate, it will go down to baseline, which is where most men are as they get older, just goes down, 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 or you can knock it back up to... 50% higher. And guess what effect that has on a woman? Makes her want to have sex with you. <laughs> See, this is the whole story. When men's testosterone levels skyrocket, we produce pheromones and pheromones have been measured to activate women's estrogen production. Uh, women are just attracted to confident men, powerful men, influential men, 
uh, not saying power like a bad guy, although for some women they are, it's confident men. Why? Because when you have that confidence, it puts out pheromones. And whenever you have confidence, confidence is the number one uh, mindset to produce testosterone. So when you're confident, you're producing testosterone. And when you, now women, on the other hand, it's something similar to confidence, but it's actually, if you have a little discernment, it's different. It's called reassurance. Mm. You see, she goes into the room and she feels reassured. She has assured, she's assured that she is beautiful, that she is attracted, that she will be supported, that she is loved. So that's kind of a confidence, but it's different from the confidence that says, look what I can do. See, this is women are out there trying to be confident. Look what I can do. And they're wondering, why don't men attracted to me? Is that men are not, we don't need somebody who can do so much. We need somebody who lets us do for them. Yeah. So that's the whole dynamic. You know, if you put it in, if you put it in old fashioned terms that are out of date for sure, but there was always common wisdom, never be smarter than a man, never be more powerful than a man, and he'll be attracted to you. Now that's out of date. Okay. I'm not saying that, but there was wisdom back then. Today, women are on their male side. No problem. They have to find their female side and what their new female side needs. So you see, in the old days, if, if a woman uh, couldn't be educated, this is a long time ago, she's getting pregnant. See, this is why women need to get educated. They're getting pregnant and they're breastfeeding and they're concerned about their family and so forth. I've been down in the Amazon. You can see it down there. Women are having babies and they're breastfeeding and making another baby. All this stuff's going on. So they needed men to protect them, to provide for them, to go into the forest, to do dangerous things, to lift heavy weights. You see, women needed men, and so men felt loved. Not anymore. <laughs> and today, what do women need men for? So the whole idea here is if a woman was strong, then a man uh, wasn't so attracted to her unless he was stronger and saw that I can provide something for you that you need. Well, if you're a strong woman and you're an independent woman and you're a capable woman and you're a hardworking woman, what do you need a man for? And so many women say that. And then they say, why don't I have a man in my life? Because there's, it's like there's no job opening. You know, <laughs> if, if I can provide something for you that you truly value, then you'll appreciate me. You'll build a statue to me. See, this whole idea of tearing down statues now of men, this is so wrong the reason there's statues primarily of men, there's some of women, of course, but they're primarily of men is because women figured out if when men give up their lives for us, it's because we don't want to do that. <laughs> when men do stuff that we don't want to do, let's make sure we give them a big statue. Let's reward them. And ironically, when you build a statue for a man, you're going to produce testosterone in him. When you build a statue for a woman, you're going to build testosterone in her. Do women need more testosterone? No biologically too much testosterone will actually lower her estrogen levels. And then she'll wonder why is it? I'm not happy. Why am I feeling overwhelmed? Why am I always seeing problems wherever I look that I feel I have to solve because I can't depend on anybody else to do it. It's gotta be me. This is like the craziness in the world today. The world is turned upside down. This is like, and you know, I just have to say something bizarre too, but we are all connected to the world and yep. There's chaos going on in the world right now. There's massive chaos going on. The weather, the people, the wars, all this. I just look on the TV, wow, crazy. And crazy starts within, within us. And right now the world is crazy to deny for men to lose touch with their masculine strength, for women to lose touch with their ability to need men, to, to uh, appreciate men, to admire men. And women will say to me, well, show me that man. I say, they're all there. They're all men. You just don't see it because you're on your male side. You don't know what you, you don't know why you need a man. And many women go, I don't need a man. I don't need, like need is weakness. Need is the foundation of love. Now let me give you, and that's love is your estrogen. Need is your estrogen. Well, if you're hungry, I remember once I was homeless before, <laughs> after I was a monk for nine years, then I came back out in the world to study psychology, but I had no money and I was homeless. And I went for days without eating and it was cold and I didn't know what I was going to do. I kept praying to God, nothing happened. Then my friend came and this is like 30, 40 years, 40 years ago. Right. Yeah. And, and my friend came and he saw the situation and he said, Hey, here, John, here's $50 in case you need it. <laughs> Now, to me, at that time, in terms of money back in those days, that's like $500. So imagine you're hungry. Somebody gives you $500, no strings attached. 
are you happy or what? I yeah, was so happy. happy and he's a friend for life. I'll never forget that <laughs> moment, that day. It was so helpful to me. God helped me get back on my feet. And then I had to, you know, get a job and work. <laughs> I'd been praying to God to save me. <laughs> Finally, I got the message. You got to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just anyway. going to come to you. <laughs> Yeah, we all have to find our way in life, you know, yeah. and, and to think it's an easy road is not, uh, you know, I know people want the easy fix. They want this relationships can be easier, dramatically easier, but our lives, who we are, every step of growth comes from some level of suffering. See, this Buddha taught life is suffering. Jesus taught suffering on the Christ. You know, all these traditional things, suffering is a part of life. We shouldn't resist it. We should embrace it and move beyond it. You see, if you're whatever you resist will persist. So if you're so upset, you have to look at, okay, what am I upset about? Why am I upset? And then let it go. But you got to feel it. You, this is called emotional intelligence. This is why the world can be much, much better today as, than in the past. Because we do have the potential, once you're able to be on both your male and female sides at the same time, then you have the ability to have self-awareness. Self-awareness allows you to feel deeply inside yourself and give yourself the love and support you need by recognizing that 99% of anything that's upsetting you has to do with accumulation of unprocessed, unresolved issues from your past. This is the foundation of psychology today is here you've got all these rich people. What do they have to complain about, right? And they're all going to rehab, they're alcoholics, they're drug addicts, they're suicidal. They're so successful. Why, why are they not happy? Everybody listening who doesn't have that, they think, well, I would be different. No, you wouldn't because you don't know, unless you know how, when that stuff comes up, how to process it, how to know that everything you feel, if it's not positive, is a lie. It's a lie if it's causing you suffering. Whenever you're suffering, you're telling yourself a lie. And that was the foundation of Buddhism, which is, life is suffering until you realize step two you realize that you're causing it you're causing your suffering not your partner that's called getting your buttons pushed you know i'm okay you're okay but you get your buttons pushed it's not about you it's about me that's hard to hard to see it's about me because you keep thinking it's my partner so i found the solution to make it easier for people when you're upset with your partner when you're blaming your partner for anything First of all, notice what you do, because people do different things. Some people withhold love. Some people smile, but resent inside. Some people give more. Some people hold back from giving more. You know, yeah. we all have our mechanisms. Some of us try to control the other, give them advice, poke at them, criticize them, make demands, withhold sex. All those, these are all these different mechanisms. Now, everybody's different when it comes to that. There's some things women do more than men, some things men do more than women. Uh, just for fun, we'll look at those. It's called complaining. <laughs> They're notorious. Complaining, nagging, controlling. This is the, 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 yeah, I was about to say the three C's, but I didn't do them all with C. But anyway, so if you ask any man, you know, who's been married a long time, what bugs you about your partner? Oh, she complains too much. You know, sometimes she's nagging me. You know, it's like, I'm always feeling controlled by her. Whatever I want to do, you know, something wrong with it. <laughs> You know, they tell me things like, you know, I, I help out, I'm washing the dishes, I finish them instead of, instead of like, hey, isn't that great? Well, you should do that, taking for granted. Or she says, but you forgot to do this. Why didn't you do this? You know, women will, but see, that's women when they're out of balance, they always see what's wrong. And this is a, a biological function is that when your body makes stress hormones, you have a bias towards looking for negativity and then you train your, then you get wiring in your brain that always goes to negativity and the wiring that would go to positivity to see what's good. That wiring gets weaker and weaker and the receptor sites for the dopamine and that part of the brain just disappear because you don't use them. If you don't use it, you lose it because we're always in fight or flight. Anybody male or female, it's just that women more easily today go into fight or flight. Why? Because they're way on their male side. They don't have relationships. See, it takes a relationship to support estrogen production. You don't need a, you don't need a relationship to be, have testosterone. Testosterone, actually, when you're a single man, your testosterone is higher than the average dating man. And your average dating man is higher than your average man in a committed relationship. 
such as your testosterone goes down a notch. Yeah. How do you support it? Let me finish. Let me just finish. It will go out. How do you solve it? I know you want to solve it. How do you solve this? Solve this by first understanding your mistakes. You see, you got to, that's why I said all those other things. You got to stop it. You got to realize I'm killing myself. I'm doing it to me. But you get into a committed relationship. You got to understand the problem before you can fix it. I got the fixes. So the, 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 uh, Single man, the committed man, the married man, get married, your testosterone levels go down even more. Get pregnant, have a baby, have babies, your testosterone levels go down even more. This is the average, didn't happen to me. Why? Because I manage my sexual energy. There's nothing more powerful to bump up your testosterone than independence, doing your best to be successful, putting forth effort, working hard, being logical, being reasonable, Don't let your emotions control you. But most importantly, don't ejaculate more. (laughs) Once a week. week. Yeah. Don't throw your life force away. You know, there's some wonderful books out there. Um, I don't know why I can't turn this thing off. It's okay. Uh, The, the, one of the books is uh, the multi-orgasmic man. You know, Corey, this is everybody listening to this show. They should read one of those books on how to be multi-orgasmic. If you're a man, uh, I've tried to pr- try to remember some of the names of the writers, but whatever. There's several approaches to this. It's what I do. I, I've taught this. Uh, um, Montak Chi is one of them. Montak Chi is who I'm remembering. Thank yeah. you. Montak, what he does in his book, The Multi-Orgasmic Man, is he explains for like 70 pages why not losing your semen transforms your life. Okay. Makes you into a Superman, makes your brain work better, pumps your testosterone up. Now here I'm 70 years old. I have sex every day, but I never ejaculate. That's when you master. This is, this is like being an NBA basketball player, <laughs> you know, throwing hoops 50 in a row going in the basket. This takes a lot of training, but you can start. The way you start is to give up masturbation completely. If you're in a girlfriend, if you have a girlfriend, what you do is you only have sex. You only release your semen once a week. That will be good training. Uh, it's where you're no longer attached Cause it's, it's, you're addicted. Hey, yeah. everybody's addicted to sex today. Cause yeah. we're so yeah. suppressed and, or we're addicted to no sex. I have to remember that some people are like, <laughs> I'm beyond it. Cause if you don't have sex every week and you're a man, your testosterone levels go down. You got to use it or you lose it. So you have to have sex. So too much sex is more than once a week, unless it's a special occasion. I'm not like an extremist here. You know, you, you, you go to a hotel room, <laughs> Just bringing your partner to a hotel room will increase her sex drive because suddenly she doesn't have to feel, I have to clean up the mess. I have to worry about the sheets. I have to do this. I have to handle that. There's nothing she has to think about. You see women, they hold the world inside of them all the time. And that's a stressor. So it's hard for them to sort of get out of their brain and get into their body, which is why basic sex skills are our uh, foreplay. Now, I don't even need to do any foreplay. Oh, I enjoy it actually more than my partner just because she has orgasms all the time. You know, this is because uh, I am practicing the multi-orgasmic man who I, and you can learn how to have orgasms without ejaculating. Then you learn how the orgasm is much more satisfying than the ejaculation. Ejaculation is just the end, but you have to like, <laughs> you know, when I first mastered this, I was having sex for six hours, eight hours. And then, you know, I can do that because I'm somewhat retired. I have <laughs> kids running around the house. You have kids running out the house, it's different. Yeah, yeah. But once you, you, you're free to have more time and you can master this, then you can have lots of hours of sex, but it would always create a soreness. So now I'm just happy doing, you know, 30 minutes once or twice a day. It's such a nice, and you don't even need to do much foreplay except what you're enjoying simply because the woman is always at a higher level of estrogen. You see, when women have orgasms, their estrogen is at peak level. Now, what's challenging though, is just remember another dynamic is that, which keeps people from having sex, is that when women have a big orgasm, what happens is they open up and at that moment, the man pulls away, he ejaculates. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I opened up and now I lose him. So that's why men need to make sure that they manage their sexual energy. So at least in seven days on the seventh day, after six days of abstinence on the seventh day, his testosterone shoots to that higher level. And that's called counter conditioning. In psychology, we have something called conditioning. If every time I put my finger close to the fire, it burns. I don't want to put my finger close to the fire. If every time a woman opens her heart, 
flooding with oxytocin, bonding with him, and then he detaches. Why does he do that? Because estrogen and oxytocin lower testosterone. What rebuilds testosterone is distance. So you see, we're like mirrors of each other. Men need distance in order to rebuild testosterone. Women need connection in order to stimulate and, est and rebuild estrogen levels, to increase estrogen levels. So then you might think, gee, we're perfectly incompatible. Yeah. No, <laughs> we're not at all because she doesn't have to connect with him. She has to connect with other people in other situations because it's, it's like the worst thing is to invest all your money in one asset. You have to diversify. So the same thing when it comes to needing. You need to have romance, that's a need, but you also need to have your own self-sufficiency, which is depending on yourself to be happy. You also need education. You also need play and fun. That You don't need your partner for any of those things. You also need a higher power or a coach or some spirituality in your life. These are biological needs that we have. I wrote a whole book on human needs called How to Get What You Want, Want What You Have. And in that book, the theme there is first understand as a human being, you have all these needs, selflessness, selfless service is another one, unconditional love is another one, uh, work to serve others and also serve yourself, taking care of your body. Yeah, that's another need, which we have to con you know, consider our health at all times. People don't do that today. We have such a sick society. Yeah, you, the whole COVID thing would never be nothing. It's nothing if people were healthy and a few exceptions yeah, right. here and there. Uh, but everybody's obese who's getting it. Everybody's got high blood pressure. You know, these are signs of imbalance and they're taking drugs for it. They're diabetic. So yeah, why do you need those things? Because we don't know how to take care of ourselves. We have to understand. Same thing when it comes to eating, eating too much, sex, having sex too much. You have to find what's right for you. And you can have lots of sex or got people think, oh, I'm going to have to give up sex on twice a week or three times a week. I have to do that. I said, yeah, you have to give up your addiction for a greater cause. Nothing more powerful to yeah, strengthen yeah. your masculinity, A. And B, once you start freeing yourself of that, that addiction, then you can start to learn how to be multi-orgasmic because you have to let go of that, that sneeze. It's like a sneeze when you ejaculate and it does produce a lot of dopamine. But if you can maintain the waves of orgasm and orgasm and orgasm, you get much higher levels of dopamine, but without the intensity, you, you, you don't, why do I want that? It's just kind of like ending. That's what an ejaculation is. It's an ending rather than continuing to rise higher and higher. And this is what's possible for us. You know, you say, how do you do this? Well, you start by not ejaculating all the time. For a lot of guys listening, you start by never looking at porn again. I'm telling you, you're throwing your energy away. The energy needs to come inside of yourself and be used. However, once you have more energy, if people don't do what they say, you see, you say, I'm going to do something and you don't do it. That will create an internal pressure, which causes you to go too far to your female side to want to release that energy by overeating, by eating junk food, by having stimulants, by wasting, wasting your energy rather than being productive. And I'm not this extreme Spartan. I have been in my life, but you have to have some part of your day, which is Spartan. Like, you know, I'm tough. Like I jump into my ice cold pool every day, at least right now it's summertime. It's not as cold, but jumping in that pool, Win Hof, you know, ice man, everybody should be doing that breathing exercise. If you can't get into a cold shower, it will help you get there. I also practice meditation. You know, these are all very important aspects of fulfilling our needs. So we're not just depending on our partners. So women need a man who will pull away after sex so that she can now detach from him and connect in other places to fulfill other needs inside of her. For a man, particularly, he needs to detach from sex because it's so overwhelming with love and estrogen. Estrogen is what causes the release. Uh, the estrogen goes higher than his testosterone levels. And now it, the ejaculation happens, oxytocin happens. He detaches, he needs, his body will automatically detach various degrees. Now, when I, I talked about before, you said, how do you keep the passion alive? The first thing you do is you stop doing all those things that monkeys do, that your parents did, that other people do. You, you got to stop. You just go, stop. What are the ways I sabotage success in my relationships? And you can all underline it. It all starts with blame. It's suffering as you're looking outside yourself as the cause of your suffering. Next, you have to recognize I'm causing my suffering. So how do you do that? 
Well, if you realize you're the source of all pain and suffering in your life, then you'll stop trying to inflict it on your partner. <laughs> stop trying to change them. Start trying to change yourself. So how do you change yourself? This is the, the revelation of Beyond Mars and Venus book. For most people today, if you're unhappy and you're stressed and you're trying to change your partner in some way or you're back down on yourself, you need to stop. And it's hard just to stop unless you have some place to go. I think it was back in the 60s, a guy wrote a book called Positive Addiction. And you know, he was saying, if you've got an addiction, you need to have another addiction that you can go to. It's like kind of like I went from wanting to eat junk food to eating uh, apples and, you know, having some fruit, you know, have to do something because if I was addicted to that reaction. So your addictions can usually go right way, you know, these behavioral addictions in 30 to 60 days if you just use some willpower, but you need to have something else you do. So every time you feel like you want to complain to your partner or blame your partner or doubt your partner, doubt your doubts. Okay. Underline that. Anybody listening, write it down. Let this be your mantra. Doubt your doubts, mm -hmm. doubt your doubt. doubts. All negativity comes from fear. It's doubting. Okay. So whatever you're thinking, it's wrong. You are, <laughs> we're all like crazy. We're everything we see in the outer world right now. That's us. You know, we are one with the universe. We're all crazy. These things, but we can go beyond that, doubt your doubts and go to your new addiction. And what that would be, if you shift from one to controlling and being negative and all that shift gears, and this is behavioral for women, do things, do things that will create estrogen for men, do things that will create testosterone. Simple thing. That's why I have this whole book. What things produce testosterone? What things produce estrogen for women? Simply put, anything a man is successful at, good at, that makes him feel confidence, not fear, not stress, that is a testosterone producer. For women, anything that you enjoy, that you like, that you want to do, as opposed to you have to do. No have tos. The only have to you have is to do something that's not a have to, but you're enjoying yourself. And women were always say, oh, I have no time for me. I said, yeah, you're the source of your problem. <laughs> Stop and take time for you, which means do what you like to do, what you enjoy doing. And also, if you can do things where you're depending on others for support, now that could be shopping. You depend on the store to buy something that can be uh, that can be nature. You're wanting to water nature, nurturing, but you're getting a result from it. You know, you enjoy it. It's beautiful. Doing anything to make yourself look beautiful uh, and, and, and like yourself more. There's so many types of estrogen stimulators. The most powerful, those are all just beginner stuff. The most powerful is processing negative emotions. All emotions are estrogen stimulating. Positive emotion, express positive emotions as much as you possibly can and process privately negative emotions with your friends, but never about your partner. You can't share your negative emotions with your partner. If you be, psychology has ruined relationships. Oh, we have to talk about our feelings. So, so important. Yes, talk about your positive feelings, make requests in a non demanding way. But if you have negativity, don't throw that on your partner. That's yeah. called go to your therapist, go to your coach, go to your journal, go to God, go to your friends, share what's inside. You can't push it down. The reason sharing negativity is so important is that when you have a negative emotion, if you're a woman, particularly not a man, this is different. If you're a woman and you push that emotion down, what's going to happen is you're going to lessen your ability to feel positive emotions. If you push your negative emotions down, your ability to feel positive emotions will diminish because pushing your emotions down pushes down estrogen. Pushing emotions down in a man pushes down estrogen, hooray, then you have more testosterone. See, suppressing your emotions has always been what we men are taught to do. Suck it up, don't whine, don't complain, don't get mileage out of telling your victim stories unless you're joking about it. You know how we guys, we get together, we joke about it. Everybody wants to be so heavy and serious if you're guys. No, that's not the way. See, everything I'm teaching is in harmony with the past, but updated for the now. Because once you do something that makes you feel good and you're a man, then look inside. And if there's some negative emotions, you process them. But never needing to process, you're never needing to change somebody. Using negative emotions, this is man or woman, using negative emotions to get somebody to change makes you a monkey. 
it reinforces the primitive part of you that has no connection to spirit, no connection to free will, no connection to your ability to do what works. Instead, it never works to throw negativity on somebody else. When you do that, they'll be defensive. They're not going to hear you. <laughs> They're going to mirror you. Have you ever noticed your husband's like, oh, okay, he's doing all right. And then suddenly you start complaining to him and then he gets all riled up and complains back. Yes, yep. men complain, but usually only in reaction to women complaining. <laughs> and then he, she complains. He then tells her why she shouldn't complain or she shouldn't be upset. He'll minimize. And what does she do? She amplifies and he'll minimize and she'll amplify and he'll minimize. How do you solve the problem? Men don't minimize. Women don't amplify. Practical tip. Billion dollar phrase right here, or at least a million. <laughs> that is women. If you want to share something that's not going to sound too pleasant to him, you know what it is. Don't just throw it out there like if he loves you, he should hear you. It doesn't work that way. You know, I can love you, but if you punch me in the arm, I'm going to bruise. You know, you, you got to get you, uh, people are people. You, you have to treat them with love and respect, and understanding and compassion and under trust, you know, but we want to push ourselves on somebody else. So when you've got something upsetting you and you want to tell your partner, Make sure your intention is not to change your partner, but your partner to understand your sensitivities. And that's all without demanding change on his part. That's hard to do because we're all monkeys in that sense. We use our negative emotions to get people to change. For example, if we're a monkey and we really have no ability to communicate. You step on my foot. What do I do? I go, ow, and you do it again. I go, ow, ow, and you do it again. I go, ow, 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 ow. You know, suddenly you're making him the bad guy, and now he will mirror back. No, I'm not the bad guy. You're the bad person for making me the bad person. Wow. We've got to get out of that loop. And I'm telling you, you can't get out of that loop until you stop whatever doesn't work and start doing something to produce estrogen if you're a woman. For a man, start doing something to increase testosterone if you're a man. Then step three, this is four steps. <laughs> stop step two go in terms of what will balance your hormones step three is come back with no demands of your partner because you're feeling good and what you do is maybe you have a request you want them to know what you'd like them to do to make your life better that's okay but don't ask for more yet you need to give more and then ask for more but then that's a whole knowledge is how do you give more to a man how do you give more to a woman you have to understand how men and women's needs are different why are their needs different? There are certain universal needs, like I mentioned before. But when it comes to men and women in relationships, we have something called emotional needs that when met will stimulate estrogen or when met will stimulate testosterone. So when a woman focuses on asking for help in small increments and a man does something for her, then she can appreciate what he did. And it's that appreciation of him doing something that actually raises his testosterone him doing things for her actually raises her estrogen. So there's an art of demonstrating if I'm a man, I want my partner to appreciate me a lot, which is going to bump up my testosterone. And even as I listen, I have to laugh and chuckle because I know some men, women are going, well, why does he get to be appreciated? I'm not appreciated. <laughs> I'm not. All unhappy women are demanding appreciation yeah. and they never become happy. You can't make them happy by saying you did a great job. What what they need is respect. There's a difference between appreciation and respect. Honoring somebody, priority, being inclusive to someone, being understanding of someone, showing, demonstrating, caring about them, that they matter. See, these are the things that women need most from men. What men need most from women is to feel trusted, accepted, and appreciated. And you know, in my, that's a, right there in my book, Men Are From Mars. I just updated it in Beyond Mars and Venus, showing even more powerful ways to demonstrate that. For example, how do you show a man that you trust him? You ask for help. Somebody <laughs> wants, I'm ask for help. First of all, I don't need help. I'm a strong woman. Well, boom. Why are you a strong woman in the first place? Because you don't trust anybody's going to help you. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Fortunately, this is the plight we're in. We're so, so out of balance. Let's say your mother couldn't depend on your father. This is so common today. Well, how does a girl learn I can trust a man? How does a boy know I can be trusted by a woman? If you didn't have a father who was adored, well, not adored, but admired, the wife is adored, the man is admired, the man is trusted, the man did a good job, your dad's a great guy, your mom's a wonderful person, I adore her, I love her, we prioritize her, we respect her. See, these are the dynamics 
that, why do I say those things? Why am I not saying, look, we need to like care about men. We need to respect men. We need to hold men. We need to be empathetic to men and what they're going through. All these cuckoo people saying what men need, what men primarily need is the stuff I do on the outside needs to be loved. And what women primarily need is the stuff on the inside of her needs to be honored, respected, and supported. See, there's a, there's a difference here. Now, do I want to be someone that care about me? Yeah, I like that too. That's nice. But it doesn't increase testosterone. See, that's the difference. Anytime you do things for a man, we go, I like it. Didn't raise my testosterone, but it made my estrogen. <laughs> I like that. I'm a passive man. So many passive men of these resentful wives doing all these things for him. See what I do? See what I do? She says, she's poisoning him by doing things for him. Women do too much. They always say, how do I stop doing so much? Stop and start doing things for yourself that produce estrogen. In the beginning, you have to break a habit, but it quickly changes when you start doing those specific things that will produce estrogen. And you clearly know that you are ruining yourself and your partner by giving more than you're getting. So that's another dynamic. Giving is, is everybody thinks that's so feminine. Well, every woman I know of for 50 years, counseling women who are unhappy, they all say, I give, I give and a give and give. I don't get back. Huh? Why is it that you don't feel happy? You're giving <laughs> because giving is masculine. See, men give up their lives. Men give up their comfort. Men comfort, give up their ease. We're the guys. We're the tough guys. And as long we can do that, as long as somebody recognizing us, you, good job. Great. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. But we're not getting that anymore. Women don't even need us. You can't love someone unless you feel I need them. And men, by the way, are caught up. It's a part of being a man and the conditioning that we've come from and also part of masculinity is that emotions, tenderness, feelings, that produces estrogen. That is damaging to men if they don't have confidence. You see, you've got to have confidence and look what I can do. That's your testosterone side. If you go too much to your emotional side, estrogen goes up. It, it weakens you. And ironically, it's addictive. It's, men can be bigger complainers than women. And they're out there. Men particularly shows up a lot as neediness. Men, women today tell me, oh, these guys are just so weak and needy. And that's he's on his female side. He can't, his testosterone has to balance that wonderful, wonderful feminine side that he has. And how do you know that you're, 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 you're not too far on your female side? Anytime you're a man and you have a negative emotion, you're too far on your female side. Now, if you're a woman and you have a negative emotion, you're on your female side. But if you use that negative emotion to get someone to change, now you're going to your male side and you'll be addicted to the little bit of fulfillment you'll get from being on your estrogen side. It's addictive wow. to complaining is the most addictive thing. You know, I, I can read books on uh, uh, brain science. You can see it all with brain science. As soon as you use a negative emotion for your survival, to get fed, to get love, to get support, that becomes the priority is to, is to create pathways to look for things to trigger those negative emotions. You've got to use positive emotions to get what you want. Then what will happen is your brain starts developing new wiring in your brain, new pathways in your brain. Because when you're wanting and needing, you look at what's available to you rather than what's dangerous to you. And this is the fault. This is the fault of a trauma, traumas in our past and so forth. That happens to all of us to various degrees. And ironically, it's happening it's happening more for us today than ever before. And the reason for that is we have more self-awareness. See, self-awareness is connection to our spirit, a connection to the soul wisdom. Now, let me tell you a little story. When I was growing up in Houston, Texas in the 50s, we had five boys and the, six boys and one, one girl. And my mother basically, my parents didn't argue fight. They had a very harmonious relationship because my dad had a good job. That's all she expected from him. He wanted to have good jobs so that she could take care of her family. And two is when the boys were not listening to her, respecting her, she'd say, if you don't listen to me, I'm telling your father. And you know what my father would do? If you got in trouble, he'd go to my room, bend over, pull down your pants. He'd pull out his belt and he'd whip you. 
Now that's horrendous. Nobody today would think of such a crazy thing. <laughs> but by the way, it's still done in Texas. But <laughs> <laughs> I moved to California. <laughs> this is like, but you see, this is the sensitivity that people had at that time. Now I did a whole documentary once on how to raise children without having to punish them. And I had these children who were who've been punished. And I said, well, what, what do you think about your parents punishing you like this? And they say, well, I think it's because they love me. Well, why do they think that? Because somebody told them children just take it in. And I said, well, why else do you think they, they punish you? And that little boy says, oh, so I know what I did is wrong. Because you can just hear his parents saying, you know, I have to punish you to let you know that what you did is wrong. And so these other little children who haven't been punished, I said to them, now, what do you think about punishment? Well, my parents don't punish me. And I said, well, how do you know that you did something wrong then? And the little boy says, well, my parents just tell me. <laughs> communication, the right kind of communication will motivate your children. The wrong kind of communication doesn't motivate your children. Communication is the answer, but we have to learn a new way of communicating. Just like in relationships today between men and women, we have to have a way of communicating that will stimulate estrogen in her and testosterone in him. And what does that mean primarily? It means that the man listens a lot more to the woman and the woman shares a lot more to the man. Now, what are you seeing all the time? What women do in relationships is what are you thinking? What are you feeling? What's going on inside of you? They're always trying to penetrate into the man. Whenever you're penetrating into somebody, guess what energy you're producing? Male energy. You're going to your male side. And why do women want to penetrate into men? Because they're afraid. What is he thinking? Does he love me? Does he not? I need reassurance. And what they have to do is share instead of asking questions, share, open up and share, learn how to do that. Women don't know how to do that. I, you know, I have to train women who are unhappy how to share their feelings. All they want to do is talk about what's wrong. They want to talk about the story. And it's, it's literally like an iceberg. You see, you can talk about what happened, what didn't happen, what should happen, what he didn't do, what she did do, what she doesn't do. That's all just head stuff. That doesn't change anything. You got to change in the heart. You got to change in the gut. You got to go to the subconscious. You got to go to the unconscious. That's your past coming up on you. So you have to go deep. And this is the art of going deep. Whenever you're upset, here's an exercise, a quick exercise. Now, my books elaborate on all this stuff, right? But I'm going to give you an overview. You sit down, whether it's a man or woman, man should go off and do something and feel good. Then he should check in on his feelings and say, okay, anything left in there, I'll process it. I'll explore it. Because see, we have more self-awareness. We have more sensitivity. We can look inside. And she does the same. So she's upset about something. She goes into her, talk to somebody easier for women when they talk, if the person knows how to listen, or she can journal. And that's really good. And what you do is you write out what happened that makes you angry, that you don't like, that you resent? You start with that. Then you go a little deeper and you go, what is it I'm disappointed about? What am I sad about? What might be hurting, feeling hurt? Then you go deeper in that. What am I afraid of? What are my doubts? What are my concerns? What are my worries? See, that's vulnerability. Get in touch with your fears and then get in touch with your regret. I'm sorry. And what am I sorry about? Well, if you don't understand that all negativity is your fault, you won't ever feel sorry. You always feel justified. Is it nobody's ever taught this before? Is it you should be sorry, regret anytime you have negative emotions? Oh, you hurt me so much. You did this to me. You make me angry. You disappoint me. It's all about you did me. No, they made their mistakes. Absolutely. No problem with that. Nobody's perfect, right? They're doing what they do, but you're having a negative reaction. So process your negative reaction. And then you're imagining when you're writing, you're writing a letter to the person, sharing all you feel and then say, I'm so sorry I get angry about you. It's not that big a deal. That was that million dollar phrase I forgot to say. <laughs> if you're gonna share something with a guy, you basically minimize and he will amplify his loving response. But what women do when they share negativity, they anticipate nobody's gonna be compassionate or empathetic. And maybe that's been the case. So they amplify. Whenever you amplify negativity, somebody else is going to minimize it. Men will minimize, women will amplify. And so just the way you get him to amplify his compassion is you want to say something. You say, I just want to bring something up. It's not a big deal, but I want you to know the other day when you said that thing, it hurt my feelings and I processed it. I'm good with it. I know you're doing the best you can, but what I'd prefer in the future is something like this. Or at least if you can do that, that would be great. Wow. Wow amazing to be able to communicate like that. Well, that was, <laughs> you listen to me say that 15 times. There are 15 things I did in there. 
to, to, it's a complicated thing, how to communicate your truth to somebody without them becoming defensive. And that's an art. Boy, when you learn to do that, then you get people actually listening to you rather than depending on them to be some kind of perfect listener who can hear you without being shaken. You know, women would come to me as a counselor and say, why, why can you hear me so wonderfully, so interested, and my husband can't and won't? <laughs> because look at the difference. You're here in my office once a week for 50 minutes, all right? So already I know I only have to do 15 minutes listening to your problems. That's one thing. I don't live with you. But two, <laughs> everything you say and I ask you questions about is blaming him, not me. <laughs> if you were blaming me, I'd say, find another therapist. I'll waste my time with you. <laughs> Are you kidding? And the third is you talk for 50 minutes and primarily I'm listening and providing good support and good and wisdom and insight to help you, guide you, support you. It's over in 50 minutes and I get paid. What payment does he get? You think I'd do this if I wasn't getting paid? Come on, that's my job. What is his job? His job is something he chooses to do. It's not really his work. It can become work if you don't give him the payment. The payment he needs is what you gave him from day one, which is appreciation, trust, openness, acceptance. That's who you were. Women are always saying to me, why has he changed? No, you changed and he changed, no doubt about it. Well, how can I be accepting of him? He's just not good enough. Is that love? See, we've got to find the love in our heart. The love is there. Love is not trying to change somebody. It's our hands are open. I love you so much. And this is what sex is about. I love you so much. I want you inside of me. You know, this, I want to take you in. I want to hug you and squeeze you and put you in. And he wants to squeeze you and be held by you. This, this is and, and that one part of him, which is so sensitive. This is why sex is so, so important, particularly for a relationship to grow in love, is that men are tough. You go to your male side, your testosterone goes up, you're not as sensitive. One part of you is always sensitive and that's an erect penis. When that erect penis goes into a wet vagina, it feels comforted, it feels squeezed, it feels touched, it feels loved. That opens his heart dramatically. Women don't realize that is the love organ on a man. I have to tell you a joke somebody told me the other day just for fun. <laughs> this is uh, from ancient Chinese and a man a man needs, now I don't, I, I'm all into monogamy and everything, but this old fashioned thing, it says, a man needs many, many women to fulfill one desire. A woman needs one man to fulfill all her desires. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a very funny saying. Yeah, but but the, the, the reality there is that we are different. Men start down south. You know, the traction is so important to sustain that keeps his heart open and it needs to be used. And when a man has an open heart, it helps her to go more into her sexual side. So it's reciprocity. That's the whole idea of doing things to help a woman feel a bit romance. Her estrogen goes a little higher then he, his testosterone will go higher. And this, and then her estrogen will go higher and his testosterone will go higher. We build on each other and we can experience a high that you cannot experience outside of making love. That is the highlight of bringing in the divine energy into the physical body through relationship. You can't do it alone. I was a monk, a yogi. I can, I can go to the heights. I can sit in Samadhi for 10 hours or 18 hours, not breathe at all. I, I did all that in the past. Okay. This is, they've done brainwave fu function on me. Like the ice man, he's doing the same thing. He can get someone to breathe and uh, hold their breath for three minutes. You know, and that's amazing. I hold my breath as long as I want. And I breathe through my body. This is, I'm not like a master of yoga meditation, but see, this came later, how to bring the light down into the body. And these techniques, without you having to be a master yogi and, and have all the things I've done in my life, I'm telling you how to do it. This is how you have a relationship today because you, what you don't realize as a younger generation, 20 to 40, you know, that generation, even younger, your consciousness is already higher. What you have to do is recognize that comes with new challenges. Women can easily go to their male side. You see, if she feels threatened and she has access to her male side, she's just going to go, well, then I'll do it myself. In the past, if you didn't have a, access to your male side, you didn't have money, you couldn't have a job, you didn't have education, and somebody was a little threatening to you, you're going to go, what, what can I do to make peace here? 
But now I just, wait a second, why do I have to bow down to you? I'll do it myself. Easy to go over to your male side now because you have a spiritual consciousness that is aware that you as a soul are both masculine and feminine, but you've got a masculine body or a feminine body. You've got to honor those females. Why do we have all this confusion around theys and, and, <laughs> and, and, the, and the trans? Because it feels so good to go to the opposite side. You see, it's easier to go to the opposite side than to be who you are. You know, masculinity means tough, okay? So to do the tough stuff, I remember my dad, I was a little boy, he'd be shaving. And I can remember my fear, I don't know how to do that. How will I ever do that? It was like such a big job. And then I learned that, you know, you had to make money and otherwise you're not going to be able to have a woman love you. Oh, I have to do this all myself. But fortunately for me, which many men don't have, is they have role models, people to teach them how to do these things. So it's not so hard, but it is hard. Work is hard. And then when you get good at it, then it starts getting easy. And now your female side's coming in to support you. Easy is feminine, hard is masculine. It's just like we want both. The objective is both, but we have to know the trap. Easy for men to go too far to easy. Easy for women to go too far to their male side. Uh, this is, they have to learn how to come back. That means to be vulnerable. And I, I did mention one thing I, I forgot to mention is the emotional vulnerability is the most powerful estrogen stimulator. I mentioned a lot of things you can do in my book. I got a list of a hundred or something like that, <laughs> but sharing your emotions to somebody who can listen without getting defensive, because you know how to share in a way where somebody's not get defensive. And what I say, you know, women say, well, can I just do this with women? I go, yeah, you can do this just with women. You get a lot of benefit, but when you can do it with your husband, uh, then you get even more benefit because when you can open up and be vulnerable with a man, you just got vulnerable with half the world because women always think, you know, oh, men won't understand. Men won't understand. No. when you can open up your husband. At first, you have to learn how to open up to yourself, to other women, to a therapist. Then you can open up to your husband because you finally figured out how to say, you know, this isn't a big deal. I processed it already. I just want to tell you what goes on inside of me when that happens. And I let it go, but I just want to know I still have that, that button got pushed inside. And we didn't cover enough today. You can't do everything in one little interview, but just to recognize all of it, the better your relationships get, okay, this is what you got to know, more problems will come up. <laughs> this is the bad news, okay? But actually it's good news. It comes out of you is that what we do in childhood, we got all these insecurities and doubts and issues that you don't even know you have until you're in a good relationship, your heart opens, you feel safe, and everything that happened when you weren't safe starts to come up one layer at a time. And as you go through that, you have a bigger heart. It's like you, you grow in your ability to love as you're able to feel safe to be all of who you are. And please, both men and women, don't go out and have sex with somebody who you don't even love you're throwing your life force energy away. Um, and I, I know the foundation of my success in life was just because of, I don't recommend this for everybody, but I was a pure celibate from 19 years old to 28 years old, never masturbated once. As a teenager, I had lots of sex and lots of masturbation, but fortunately I stopped. And so, you know, my life will be much longer as a result of that. You know, a lot of the, we haven't got the research on this one, but we know that uh, in the Taoist tradition thousands of years ago, the men who could uh, only ejaculate when they wanted to make a baby uh, would basically uh, live for well beyond one or 200 years. You know, all these stories of that. So we're talking about anti-aging. There are a lot of things we can do for anti-aging. Iceman, the breathing exercise he teaches is so good. Transcendental meditation is what I started out with in my younger years. Really good technique. Other people have been spinoffs of it, but it's good to take a class on that. Uh, the one meal a day thing or within eight hours, really, really good for people, for your anti-aging, for your vitality, for your strength, managing those sexual energy. Then you become master where you're really good at meditation. You're actually going to sit in the ice. You're going <laughs> to <laughs> gotta have orgasms every day and you never lose interest. You can perform just like that on a dime whenever, but you don't need to do it all day long. Although you can experiment with that. It's, it's, you'll just be sore afterwards. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> anyway. So I, I found moderation, as the Buddha said, moderation in all things. So we have so much to look forward to on this journey of intimacy, relationships, achieving our own success, finding who we are. There's so many modalities out there. But what's so unique about the Mars-Venus message, well, there's a lot of things, but is to understand as men, 
you have your uh, first go-to, then you go over your female side. For women, you've got your first go-to, go back to your female side, then you can come be on your male side until you can integrate them and be both happy and working hard at the same time. That's what we want. And that's being in the flow state. It's the balancing of the yin and the yang. And also along with that comes a greater ability to be in that flow state in sex where you can actually experience unlimited orgasmic energy relief. You restore your body, regenerate your body. These are all the great things. And this is within the realm of potential. We wanna move in that direction. The key thing is, I wanna to say one other thing is monogamy. So many people think they're so spiritual because they go, oh, we can be free. No, there's <laughs> nothing spiritual about ejaculating somebody you don't even know, somebody who doesn't know who you are. The whole point is not to love everybody, it's to learn to love somebody <laughs> on the <laughs> physical plane. You know, if you've got, imagine I have a million dollars, give a dollar to everybody. What have I done to the world? Nothing. Give your million dollars to one person and you'll get a big transformation. You know, this is like, take your energy. You know, I used to think as a young guy, oh, I, I don't want to be in a monogamous relationship. I want my freedom. Oh, well, yeah, freedom's a great thing. <laughs> but my freedom leads me to lusting after girls that aren't even interested in me or fake girls online that just want to do it for money. That's the freedom I have to throw my energy away every day, <laughs> as opposed to the freedom to come home to one woman that you have the best sex with. And it gets better and better and better because you're concentrating your energy into that. It's like an investment. You're continuing more and more into it. You overcome your, your ego, your limitations by learning to overcome your stuff, which will come up. Your buttons get pushed, man. You go to your cave, you process it. You come back and give more love. Same thing for women. Each time you come back, you come back with more love and then you make love. You make love through sex, sex with somebody you love, you adore, you're there with, you know, the skills for it. And that's why it's called making love. You literally make the love and then you can give it out to the world and then you can make it again, make it more. That's the journey of life is growing, not dying. Wow. A fun talk. Wow. I just want to say for everyone who is listening right now. Wow. There is, so, you just, oh, can I just give you some serious appreciation for the energy that, that you I'll just gave? That. Like you just gave so much of your energy as a gift. Um, to everyone who was listening and it was sincerely so impressive just to watch you pick this pick that use that use these all these different things and to put them all into one John I, I couldn't thank you um, more than enough and I've, I've um I've, I used a lot of your techniques so I I quit masturbating oh, myself oh, for like you were a totally receptive years. audience you just pulled it out of me that was uh, you watched my videos, you read my books you know and you're just yeah. still enjoying me I just couldn't keep keep myself back oh, was, I, could, I could just keep listening John I could literally I was just like no, just just keep going all day <laughs> I don't yeah, stop yeah. I want to watch this over again and just keep listening especially for everyone I want to say to who's listening is you know, if there was any nuggets that you resonated with at any point in time of this podcast is just go back and listen because oh, John, that was just so fantastic. It was like a, it was like our own performance. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're very well. And I want to do a little, little brief. People always say, well, how do I get more of John Gray? What you yes. do is you go to marsvenus.com, marsvenus.com. Uh, you can hear it's great blog, well-produced blogs. And yeah. my daughter yeah. produces them and directs them. She gets me to be to the point, you know, I can go all over the place. So we got those. And two, we have, we have an Academy in the Academy. We got three main things. We got our secrets of great sex. We've got our, how to get your me time. It's a woman only course, which is helping women uh, to not be overly dependent on a man for your happiness, but to set boundaries and know how to produce estrogen in your life at the right time of the month, how to produce progesterone at the right time of the month and how to produce more testosterone at the right time of the month because women's hormones are changing all the time. It's a bit complicated. This was a whole course on that. That's called, how do you get your me time? The you time, me time, we time system. My daughter, Lauren teaches that. Uh, and you know, she's 35 and a great relationship. You know, she's mastered this stuff and I edit it with her and she's so much smarter than me, but heck I came up with it. So I stopped feeling insecure. Uh, <laughs> she, she's, she's, uh, I'm just father. So, so proud. So those are resources that are available to people. And I hope people will check it out. And you mentioned to me before, I think the best introduction, if you got a boyfriend or a husband, or if you just want to get the essence of men are from Mars, which you really didn't cover all that at all. To, it's kind of the beyond Mars Venus stuff, but it's the Ted talk where I'm wearing a red shirt and there's a red background. There's two of them. Yeah. One is super good because there was 2000 people in the audience. They're all married. <laughs> and so they're, <laughs> at the check, 
The other one is the worst talk I've ever given. And it was in San Francisco where nobody was heterosexual. So they didn't relate to anything I was saying. <laughs> I to get to them, except they're not my audience. So yeah. to see me with my audience, you really get a lot of fun. Yeah. And you can say, women always say, how do I get a man to listen to this stuff? Just say, oh, this is such a fun talk. He talks about men and women. And he explains men in a way I just, That's he's really right, right on right. about me. But yeah. would you watch it just to tell me if he's right about men? And then... He's not feeling like you're trying to change him to get him to listen to it. Yeah. And the book, The Boy Crisis on, on men as well, is one of the most like powerful books that I've ever read in terms of just being like being able to be a man and truly accept yourself who you are, like where you are in the world. It's just fantastic. It's really, really wonderful book. It's written yeah. together. Uh, Warren Farrell is a good friend of mine. We go on walks every week for 10 years. He wrote the book, which I also recommend to you is Why Men Are the Way They Are. It helps a man know himself more as well. I've also written a book like that called Conscious Men, which is, you know, as you become more conscious, how to balance the masculine and feminine side of you. But I highlighted today Beyond Mars and Venus. It's such a good beginning book with my oh, work. It mm. Corey, it was such a pleasure to spend this time with you. Uh, such a pleasure to spend this time with you too, John. Thank you so much. And for, for everyone that's listening, I hope you uh, listen into this. You do all the stuff you, you follow john you get his books because I, I highly recommend them they're just fantastic especially if you want to change your life so thank you for your time thank you